Hello everybody, been looking for a uh, database, what to work with uh, moving forward for 2014 here in September. Oh, just those are seeking the, hey, it's Brian from quantlabs.net. Um, like I said, I've been looking for a good database for the last uh, day, um, preferably an open source one, a fairly easy one to work with, a fairly one uh, that can easily connect to other uh, systems, namely MATLAB, of course. Now, I've, I've used and played with MySQL in the past. It worked fine. But the upgrading and, and the feature set that's being uh, put into it in the last year has been pretty dismal. Uh, I've been reading about that a lot. There's also another exciting uh, fork version of MySQL with a MariaDB. But one of the big issues is that uh, I'm sure maybe there's, there's a way for my MATLAB to work with it. But out of box, I just want to use something... Um, that is fairly easy to connect with. So I finally found that with uh, Postgres, I was able to do that. Um, as you can see here, I'm gonna show you what I've done. Okay, so I have um, uh, Postgres already installed. I'm not gonna go into how to install it, but uh, one of the highlights of the tools they give you, and again, Postgres is fairly free. It's the most uh, popular uh, database out there right now in September 2014 for all new projects. Uh, I've been tracking it through other um, sources, but I've been using this PG admin. Um, I've set up some uh, experimental databases and schemas uh, and uh, some, some users and stuff. This tool is pretty well... Mm, crappy <laughs> compared to this one. This one's a, a payable uh, product. I've also used um, Heidi, which is pretty well not very good because it's an experimental with Postgres, so I wouldn't recommend that. And it is free, works fine for MySQL, but well, it's MySQL, we already adjust that. And the other thing is uh, MySQL, uh, what else was there? There was another one I tried that worked out, didn't work out. Uh, anyways, uh, this one, Razor SQL, seems to work great. Finally, I found something that works well. I might even spend $100, but you get full control with source code options here with uh, pretty well all the languages you can imagine, even C Sharp somewhere in there. So this, this uh, tool may prove to be very useful, maybe worth uh, buying down the line. So um, I don't get hit with the hefty charges of SQL Server uh, which I really like, but you know, if you're willing to spend thousands of dollars, um, which can and cannot be done in this economy. Uh, so let's go and focus on the free ones. Like Postgres seems to work fairly well. Hooray for that. Anyways, um, so like I said, I've got some databases I've created here. Uh, this, this test I've got, um, and I've, I moved over some uh, files from Excel. Now, another other viable option, which I did like, was uh, Access. Uh, somebody on Twitter did recommend that to me, which I do appreciate. And uh, let me just show you how it works. So we have our spreadsheet here with the entire set of um, Excel. I've, I put a list out on it, where to grab it on the blog. Uh, so here's the spreadsheet of, of the raw file. So these are all the Yahoo stock tickers that are current. Well, I, I, it's a, this year, list is about a year old from the, November 2013. Very viable because you can see it, it, it has literally thousands of all the um, possible, um, possible assets that are tracked through Yahoo. So we have stock, ETF, future indexes, mutual funds, currency, and so on and so forth. And these are the tickers that you would use for uh, Yahoo. So when you do a search on Yahoo, oh, I'm sorry, this one here, here. You do a, a ticker on this one on uh, Yahoo to retrieve what you're looking for. Very cool. So anyways, um, somebody on Twitter recommended, well, how, you know, I, I posed the question, how do I move from uh, Excel to something. So they recommended um, uh, Excel, uh, Access, which was pretty good. 
Um, and, and that would have been my top pick, but we ran into problems with MATLAB, didn't want to connect into it for whatever reason, and nor do I have the time or the patience to diagnose. But anyways, I manipulated the spreadsheet just to take out all that header stuff that you see and just has the ticker name and exchange, all that. So uh, I've, I've divided all that up into uh, each of its own table. So the first one I've done using uh, this ETF works stunningly well. Um, through another tool, I was able to generate the SQL. Don't ask me because I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, but I was able to generate the SQL for the for the table itself or the schema of the table. Um, so, for instance, here here's the table, here's the ETF, and I was able to run it uh, in the query of Razor SQL. Wow! So I was able to create the table, and then I was able to uh, just do a a very simple install or insert of one of those assets of let's say Tiffany right so you can see here let me do the query again so uh, here's the result that's what I'm looking for now because you can use all whatever databases you want I'm not about speed I'm not, I don't really want uh, no SQL solution like Redis or Mongo or Cassandra or whatever for this system I'm building out, I just want a very simple database. Of course I want it to be free. I like good tools like this one here, Razor SQL, seems to be a good choice. But ultimately it has to connect into both my .NET code and C Sharp and specifically MATLAB. Now that was the driving force and why I went with, um, with uh, uh, Postgres because this was the only database I could get to connect with. Now, you can see here I've already connected into it um, using uh, the uh, app uh, Database Explorer. Um, let me just pull that up here. So if you come under the app, now this is uh, the latest, latest tool of, um, of uh, MATLAB 2014. Now, it's asking me to connect to a data source. So that's another important um, factor you need to consider. So if I open up my uh, control panel, uh, go to OB, ODBC, uh, set it up. I think uh, I've set up a 64-bit. It's very important to configure it properly. I've created this one here called um, Postgres SQL uh, 3 zero test that's the version number of, uh, of the, uh, Postgres so I was able to create that give it some credentials the password the port and all that stuff uh, seems to work fine so if I, I just test it here you can see it was successful so you have to create that ODBC uh, DSN or data source name so that is when um, MATLAB and the database connector or sorry, the database explorer uh, needs to connect to something. Um, it's going to use the ODBC. So I've got here Postgres. I put in my uh, credentials that I created. Uh, it should work. So there you go. It, it's now connected into exactly where I want to go, where uh, I can select the table. Okay. Uh, I can I can also choose what type of uh, data structure I want to have within my MATLAB workspace. So in my case, I don't know, uh, call it uh, a table. I don't know. Uh, and I this is just for one table. So then um, I believe if I do a search on order by. Uh, ETF ticker, let's say. Uh, did this before. I'll call this uh, ticker, ticker two. Um, actually, here, here I can show the results. But you can see that everything connected okay. Oh, I remember what the problem was. 
here uh, you got to make sure you connect to the right table so here I got test but I want it to connect to this test table all or is it this one no but uh, we want test this this database here I think that's the one uh, let me just make sure here my razor SQL so we are connecting I believe it's ETF public and then there's this other one here which I so you gotta make sure you're connecting to the right one obviously yeah so we want to connect to test.etf so going back to MATLAB database explorer that gets a little confusing I guess so we want this one there we go yeah that's what we want so we can define how the dimensions of our data so we're going to call it table uh, what's the name we give it uh, for the workspace? Um, yeah, let's we'll call it ETF. That's for the workspace. Import. The following was imported. So here's our uh, variable in the workspace. Boom, boom, boom. Now imagine if you had all the potential. Um, rows as in here for all the ETFs. Now I can easily get them imported into uh, MATLAB. Now uh, on top of that um, you can see here if you miss this um, I can't remember where's my database explorer here we go. So if you look under right here this is a powerful thing about MATLAB. You can generate SQL for it. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that for that query. Not only that, but this is what I love about MATLAB. Power MATLAB. I keep saying. You can generate the MATLAB script as well to generate that. So you can just save that and run this script on the command line within uh, MATLAB. And you got yourself a connection and a way to generate uh, your data. But as you can see with this um, app, hey, why not? I can do it the lazy way, as long as I can connect into my database in the proper table. So I just want to show you that uh, visually, how you can do that. Um, in my testing, I was not able to do this with, with Access. I was not able to do this with MySQL, and of course not for sure be able to do it with um, Java, uh, with uh, SQL Lite. Now, as you can see, because I'm using Windows, I have the ability to use um, ODBC. Uh, you can also use um, JDBC uh, as well, but uh, I just don't really want to play with J Java anymore. ODBC is fine for me, um, and it's out of the box, ready to go using Windows. So, hopefully, I just want to show you the power of this. Now, with Razor SQL, the idea is to get data coming in. Now the data that I want to use, the goal essentially, is we have stocks uh, for US, um, and I'm sure there's other ones for the Europe and all that. I think they're out there somewhere. Um, and of course we've got the futures index and all that. Now the goal is to be able to use government data, figure out what sectors are strong and then have some kind of system to be able to identify what the strong players are for those those assets within those sectors be it um, uh, via future via a stock via index whatever this system could be designed for that um, now from what I have learned you always want to use if you're doing the long and short you always want to use uh, you always want to use uh, the uh, uh, the best looking or the strongest player against the weakest player. And of course, I'm going to be adding into these databases um, or tables uh, other metric or market metric data. We'll call it 
to put here on addition, implied volatility, market cap, uh, beta, uh, say implied volatility, all the EPS, all these metrics that we can use. So what we do now is we can do a query either within uh, MATLAB here, build a query, and identify via market sector because we have the um, category name. Uh, we can also, because I'll be adding in other additional metrics, I can build out queries to identify who the strongest and the weaker, weakest players are. Now, in the meantime, if I am looking at a particular sector, I have to pre-populate the current metrics uh, in, that, in those rows for that particular sector, or in this case, I call it category name. And then from there, I'm able to identify the weakest and the strongest players again, which would be my pairs for my long and my short. So once I'm able to automate that using government data and building a process that can identify those sectors on top of the sentiment, uh, we, 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 and of course being able to identify the strongest sectors to be in, or maybe let alone the weakest sectors as well uh, for shorting opportunities. So once we uh, build out this entire automated process, I do think that this will be an awesome way to um, identify trading ideas, specifically trading pairs for long and shorting, all in an in a, in a, in a automated way and be able to do it fairly quickly using all the metrics that I've already mentioned and a few others like statistics and using the power of MATLAB to be able to get those metrics into the data or the table and um, I think this is going to be a very powerful system and the way it's looking for this back end with the uh, call it idea generation generation process or phase it will be most likely built in, in MATLAB just due to the fact that I am now able to work with a database like Postgres as well as a pretty killer front-end uh, data management tool like Razor SQL and at the same time be able to build out this this uh, database explorer on top of being able to automate uh, via various scripts and various um, various uh, uh, database queries on top of you know, the metrics be able to build around queries around that to be able to get measurements for, again, the long and the short. So this is pretty exciting stuff. That could take a, a bit of time to build, but uh, once I do, I'm, I'm pretty excited to uh, maybe show that. Um, but again, I gotta put that caveat that this will not be released out to the public domain. There'll be no source code. I'm just giving you an idea how I'm doing it, and um, I'll showcase it, the results of it once it's finished. But this, this is an exciting, uh, an exciting phase uh, to, to build out true, true automated testing, being able to uh, pick out the long, the short uh, trading ideas, be it again, uh, whatever type of asset I want, if it's stock, ETF, future, all that, and be able to get a shorting opportunity as well as the long opportunity and be able to do metrics to, to say yes. And once that's all done, we add it to a watch list and we have another set of processes that will measure the metrics uh, for potential uh, risk, uh, for potential um, timing opportunities to go into it as an entry. And once that position is put on, we also have to obviously build a, a whole set of processes to watch that position as it plays out. So, exciting times ahead. And now that we have this database working on top of the connecting, everything's playing nice, we're on our way. Just wanted to give you a heads up on what's going on. Talk to you later.